In this video, I'm talking all about clone photography. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you've got a camera and a tripod and make sure that your camera doesn't shoot in automatic settings. You want to make sure that your camera shoots in manual settings. So this means if you're shooting on an iPhone, then don't use the default camera app. Make sure that you're using an advanced camera app. One way you can control the settings yourself, because if the settings are changing between photos then it's just going to make your life difficult later on. So make sure you've got your camera mounted to your tripod framed up in a position where there's not a lot of movement in the background. If there's loads of movement in the background, then unfortunately you're going to have to cut each individual clone out and it's just going to make things really time consuming for you. So with your camera mounted to your tripod and you're in a perfect location, you want to set a timer onto your camera, set the focus and run into the frame. Now you just want to do a pose, wait for a second and then run back to the camera, take another picture and keep repeating this process for as many clones as you have. Now, it doesn't matter if they're overlapping or interacting with one another because we can mask them out later on inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, once you have all of your photos, we're just going to drop those into Adobe Lightroom and we're just going to edit them so they all look exactly the same. So let's do that. So once you're inside of Adobe Lightroom, you first just want to begin by importing your photos. So we'll go import. You want to navigate to the folder on your computer. So in my example, they're on my desktop. So I'm going to go to Brooker Films, desktop, and I've put them in a clone folder. And there they are. That's all of those photos there. So I'll press import. And as you can see, I've got this first photo here. I'm up here. Second photo over there. Third photo, I'm over there looking into the drawers. Fourth photo, I'm on the right. And then this fifth photo, this is the clean plate. Now the clean plate, as you can see, is just an empty frame. And it's really important that you have the clean plate in case you need to make any adjustments or if you're overlapping each other and you need that clean background behind you, it's really important that you have that as well as the other photos. So first we're gonna go into one of the photos. So let's go to this photo. We'll go into develop. And then inside of the develop tab, you just want to go ahead and make all of your color corrections. So you can go ahead and you can increase the exposure. You could add some contrast, change the white balance if you like. Pull the highlights down, shadows up, whites up. We'll increase the vibrance, increase the saturation just a little bit. And then when you're happy with the look of that, you just want to copy that. So go copy, copy. We'll go to the first photo paste and you're going to paste that color effect onto this photo go over to the third photo we'll go paste fourth photo we'll go over and paste that in and then the last photo we'll paste that in as well so the color effect should be applied to all of the photos you'll see if i go over to this grid here you can see we've got all five of the photos and they've all got that color effect applied if they're not for any reason though then just select everything so let's all of the photos sync settings and synchronize now from here, we just need to export these from Lightroom. So we'll go exports with all of these selected. We'll choose a folder. I'm gonna put these back into that clone folder and I'm gonna do an export folder. Choose that and then you're just going to export. And that's just gonna take a few seconds to export those photos from Lightroom. Now, once you've got those photos exported, you just want to open them all inside of Adobe Photoshop and begin with the editing process. So as you can see, I've got all five of those photos now exported. So I'm just going to go to that first photo. I'm going to right click in the finder, go open with Adobe Photoshop 2020. And that's just going to take a few seconds to open up. And there you go. That first photo is loaded up. So now we can just go back into the finder, select all of the other photos and just drag those in. Now they're going to drag in individually. So just make sure they're framed up correctly. If they come in a little bit differently then just move those into the center and press enter first we just want to make sure that they're all sitting in the exact same position so just go through each individual layer and make sure the position of each photo is the same and make sure the lighting is the same if for any reason there's a color correction difference in any one of them then just go back to lightroom and make that adjustment but for now we're just going to unlock that background layer and we're just going to put the clean plate at the very bottom and then we'll lock that layer just in case we need it now we're going to go to this first layer here and we're just going to cut out this person. So I'm just going to create a mask using the polygonal lasso tool around this subject. And then we'll go command C, command V. 
and then we'll just delete the layer below it. We'll do the same with this subject here. So we'll just create a mask around this clone here. And then we'll go Command C, Command V, delete the lower layer. As you can see, we've got this person here. This person's going to be sitting on top of everyone. So we'll put this at the top and turn that off for now because we're going to have to do a precise mask in a second. Now, as you can see, this subject here is going to overlap this one as well. So this one might require a more advanced clone as well. So we'll just move that up above layer one and we'll start with this subject. So we'll go into the quick selection tool. We'll just increase the size of this. Make sure the hardness is around 100. There you go. And we're just going to zoom in and we're just going to draw a mask around this subject. So make sure that it's perfectly sitting around the subject. If it overspills a little bit on the left, don't worry. But if it's overlapping on the right where the other clone is going to be, then just make sure you get rid of that. With the quick selection tool, if you haven't selected an area that you need to select, then just hold shift on the keyboard to change that negative to a positive and that will add content into the mask like so and then just go through it and make all of your adjustments make sure that mask is perfect and then we'll go command c command v and delete the layer below so there you go you can see we've now got this overlapping effect happening and it's starting to make that clone effect look more believable now we'll go back to that top layer so we'll turn that top layer back on and we'll do the exact same thing with the quick selection tool so select the layer that the subject is on and then we're just going to go around making sure that we create a mask around this subject like so and then we'll go command C command V delete the lower layer and as you can see you've got this really awesome clone effect now happening. Now as you can see the clone effect is basically now complete if we turn off that bottom layer that clean plate layer you can see we've got all of our clones on their own individual layers and then you've got that clean plate underneath just tying everything together. So it is really important and I must stress this, it's really important that you do have that clean plate, that empty frame, just in case you do need it. Because without it, you're gonna be stuck with this or you're gonna try and have to grab the background from one of the other layers. So all that's left to do now is just to export this. So we'll go file, save as, we'll save this to somewhere, then we'll change the format to JPEG, rename this to clone, save that. And then that will come up with the JPEG options window. You just want to change the quality to 12, press OK. And that's going to take a second to export. And there you go. You've now got your clone photography, your clone photo exported from Adobe Photoshop. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something today. And I will see you on the next video. See you there.